Hello students. You might have gone through the terms that we have studied in our last lecture. We have gone through the Indian diaspora. At the same time, we have gone through the Afro-American literature. And as you must be aware that, that the migration has always been playing significant part in the human life. As uh, we have seen that this diaspora is the term that originated from the Chinese or Jews, sorry, Jews migration. It is mostly studied under the Jews migration. But although, whatever the terms that we have, over the history, over the ages, for one or another reason, human being is migrating. And Asia, the continent has emerged as one of the largest <clears throat> exporting population to the developed nations. And uh, in developed nations, the opportunities were beckoning them like Australia, America, Europe, European nations, and other parts of the world. This developed nation opened up the lots of uh, opportunities in each and every segment of human life. And it is for the developing, educated, intelligent, so-called elite class of educated people from Asian countries to migrate into the developed nations. And all that need to be studied under the, the term that is diaspora. Literature has always been the reflection of the people as we have seen, the author is a product of that society. Author himself undergoes so many influences, impressions on his deeper psychological consciousness that develop him both mentally, cognitively, and intellectually, at the same time socially, all these so-called problems and issues concerned to the author are the landmark impressions that are reflected in the literature. Lekhak ha ta samajaza ek product asto, utpadan asto, jasi te samaj vevasta se. आर्थिक परिस्थिती असेल किंवा इतर ज्या काही इन्फ्लुएन्सिंग असलेल्या ज्या काही गोष्टी असतील या सर्व गोष्टींचा समाजाचा संस्कृतीचा अनेक असलेल्या घटकांचा लेखकाच्या मनावर परिणाम होत असतो आणि याच चित्र हे त्याच्या साहित्यामध्ये येत असत आणि याच अंतर्गत आपल्याला त्या लेखकाच असलेलं मत त्याचे रिफ्लेक्शन्स सामाजिक सांस्कृतिक जीवनावरच त्याने जे अर्थ लावलेला आहे त्याचं रिफ्लेक्शन्स आपल्याला त्याच्या साहित्यामध्ये पाहायला मिळत इतकंच नाही तर त्याला काय अपेक्षित आहे त्याच्या त्याच्या असतील त्याच्या व्यक्तिगत सायकोलॉजिकल जीवनामध्ये सोशल लाईफमध्ये किंवा त्याच्या असलेल्या ब्रदरहूडमध्ये कोणत्या प्रकारच्या समस्या त्याला भेडसावतात all that he tries to paint down and like this uh, we have seen the indian diaspora the literature is reflected in indian diaspora in america at the same time we have another say nation that is china china or chinese people too have migrated 
to the developed nations. There are series of changes that occurred in the migration strategies. So what does it stand for? So Chinese American literature or Chinese American diaspora. Chinese American literature is the body of literature produced in the United States by the writers of Chinese descent. The, this genre began in 19th century and it flowered in the 20th century with such a authors, remarkable authors like C. Simfra, Frank, Maxine Kong, King, uh, Kingston, and Amy Tam. These were the remarkable writers in the Chinese diaspora. But how it came to, there is a bit of history that we need to study. Chinese <clears throat> who were the very initial stage were illiterate, but they were called upon to, to build the rail track, Pacific rail track to the European uh, so-called nations, Pacific Ocean. And all uh, say along this Pacific Ocean rail track, the railway needs to be established. All those menial type of jobs, laborer jobs, were carried by the Chinese as a laborers. At the same time, in the south of Wales, in the north of America or Canada, there were the gold fields and these gold fields opened up opportunities for the laborers to make their career. And that was the thronging so-called reason for the Chinese to migrate to the Canada and the United States. These are Chinese people. Of course, they migrated, but they never say discarded their own native ideologies, Chinese ideologies. They have inherited, deep rooted, they cannot forsake to live in the ambient American society. And that has led these Chinese people to, to carry their own respective ideologies in a foreign shores. And they carry, that is what they found uh, themselves in a kind of a humdrum. And all that we have seen is the complex, uh, say, identity that we have seen in other diaspora. Identity has always been the crisis for these Chinese so-called people. Over the ages, we have seen the America is a hostile nation to the China. America has emerged as one of the enemy nation for China. There are series of political and uh, so-called policies and these policies have reflected in the literature, in the lives of the people. There were, of course, some visa rules. These visa rules were liberalized until so-called 1963. Till then, America was rather liberalized. Udar Matwadi Dhoran, America, it's a Chinese Lokan Chasundar Bathoto. But the growing hostility, Shatrutva Duni Desham Madla Vadat Kela, and that is what America has so called on the stringent visa rules for the Chinese people. And that has definitely changed the lives of the these Chinese people in America. It not just to arrest the Chinese migration into America, but also at the same time for the harassment of these Chinese people. There were certain laws, certain policies, certain visa rules that allowed these Chinese people to 20,000 people only. 
and under the series of so called amendment in the visa policies america has brought unification of families and unification of families has again increased the chinese diaspora into america chinese identities there are certain stages this uh, harassment and this changed attitude in american say so called life has a spiritual impact on the chinese people and what are these impact what are the impressions that these visa policies and government policies have uh, so brought all that are manifested in the form of literature in the chinese say so called writings there were certain stages these chinese peoples may be categorized in four to five such a kind of a segment to which category they belong there are certain stages that are good so chinese identities as fallen leaves from a tree they cannot find the scope anywhere in the chinese uh, so called living at the same time uh, in american so called opportunities ja chinese lokanna aplya देशापासून दूर राहून अमेरिकेमध्ये कुठल्याही प्रकारचं जीवनाचं जे ध्येय आहे उद्दिष्ट आहे ती कुठलीही सापडली नाही अशा चायनीज लोक जे मुळापासून तुटलेली आहेत म्हणजे चायनीज ह्या देशापासून तुटलेले आहेत अमेरिकेमध्ये राहत आहेत ते कुठेही आपलं बस्तान बांधू शकले नाहीत अशा ठिकाणी त्यांनी त्यांनी विचार केला अँड दे they return to their soil that that they have returned to china back to china then there are such a segment of chinese people who are born by chinese descent and brought up in america je chin che lok je america madhe rahat hote america madhech aplya janmala aale ani tithes vadle असा ही एक चायनीज लोकांचा एक क्लास एक वर्ग आहे ह्या वर्गामध्ये पण आपल्याला काही जे रायटर्स आहेत किंवा ह्या प्रकारचे लोक पण चायनीज सेगमेंट म्हणून आपण ओळखू शकतो असे काही अमेरिकेचे काही लोक आहेत काही क्लास आहेत का जे अमेरिकेसाठी निघालत बट विथ फर्म डिटर्मिनेशन दॅट दे वोंट रिटर्न बॅक टू चायना they decided not to return back to china they were firm left for america not to return these were the such a chinese people such a class of uh, such uh, say society was there then there were some chinese people who are very much uh, so called patriotic they have their own indigenous roots and these indigenous roots their nostalgia is so firm and their homesickness is so firm their patriotism is so powerful that they decided that america is not their land motherland so they are proud of their chinese history but they are not able to cope up with the american type of life so they decided that to return back to china and they were finding their roots back into the chinese villages ancestral villages and these were such class of uh, so called people they are also the part of this american society then there were intelligent and incompatible in hostile nation and they decided to return they found they are intelligent but they don't found any kind of first so called compatibility in the hostile nation and that is what they decided to come back return back to china they were intelligent but they thought that there are not so opportunities or if they have the opportunities their motherland is waiting for them 
the hostile nation is incompatible for their opportunities. So let's return back to China. And these are the so-called things that were there in this so-called people. So this is also one of the class of the people. What is the characteristics and things that these Chinese authors so-called practiced and brought the readers? Chinese American literature, it deals with many topics and themes also. A common topic is, it's for a different type of race to live in a foreign country like America, in hostile nation, it's socially, culturally different one. So they found every, in every walk of life, challenges, both psychological challenges, soul, spiritual challenges, and outer challenges when they want to move around in the American cities, workplaces. So this type of identity that, that they found themselves in. At the same time, they tries to merge within the mainstream of the American life, American society. So assimilation in the mainstream is one of the features that we see. White American society by Chinese Americans. See, it's a society, it's American society, but they were Chinese Americans. Another common theme that uh, we found we often find is that interaction between the generations and early generation and the next generation. See, we have seen the class of the Chinese people who are living in America. We have American descent. Okay, Varsane, America, Made, Rathas, Lili, Upatya, Puchipidi. J. Ivadi, Rahati, Aguda, Chipidi, Tenchi, Mulahin, and Tarchipidi. Tencha, Dogan, Madil, J. Interaction, Ahit, J. Clashes, Ahit. It's an American dream. America stands for the American dream. It stands for to achieve the success by any means. They are there because to achieve the success. This is the American dream. But this dream is not achieved. Definitely it causes a wrong impression on the part of the individual. And same is the case with these Chinese people. They also struggling to cope up with these American dream. And if there is a generation of Chinese people are haunted by this American dream, there is the so-called tussle differences in the American society. So all that reflected in the literature. At the same time, Chinese born and younger, at the same time, American born generations these were also putting their so-called issues and problems and concerns in the foreign so culture and foreign nation. So naturally it has brought the questions of identity, gender, and it's often dealt with as well. So these, uh, these features, these themes are common features in the Chinese literature. Currently, there were so many uh, such books that were written by the currently acclaimed Chinese American authors like Gish Jane, Jean Kwok, Shirley Gwake Lim, Lin Lim, Sandra Singh Loho, Xuan Wong's novel, American Knees. It was published in 1996, was adapted into an independent feature film like American Knees in 2009. So these are the remarkable contributions that we see. If we think about who brought these influences that we have just discussed, Young Wing is, um, he was the first Chinese student to graduate from the American University, Yale in 1854. And his book, My Life in China and America, it was published in 1909. It was a first well and recognized author of this book. 
that we see. Lin Yutang's My Country and My People. It was used in 1935. Importance of Living in 1937. Both of these books were also belongs to the early, say, Chinese American uh, type of writing. C. Y. Lee was the flower drum song. It was also made into a Rogers and Hammerstein musical show. Jade Snow Wong was the author of The Fifth Chinese Daughter. Frank Ching's play Chicken Coops Chinaman. Maxine Hong Kingston, her book, she won the National Book Critics Circle Award in 1976 for The Woman Barrier, Memoir of a Childhood Among the Girls. See, is a very remarkable writer of Chinese origin. Other writers, if you think about, are David Henry Wong, and uh, he won the prize for his play, the FOB. FOB. OB Award for this particular play. Amy Chan is also one of the um, say so-called writer who's the kitchen god's wife, the hundred secret senses, the bone setter's daughter, saving fish from drowning, the valley of amazement. These books are very remarkable books by the Chinese American and all these features and things, features and characteristics that we have just discussed in the earlier slides have been brought to the writer's purview. Sin, Sui Sin Fa in, uh, in the Land of the Free. Another book is very famous is Chinese Ishmael and Other Stories. The Bird of Love and an Autumn Fan. Frank Chin's. These are the so-called somewhat very remarkable books that we see here in this particular segment. So whatever the writings that we have just discussed, these books brings us very close to the issues and concerns and problems of the Chinese people who migrated to America. Of course, in today's context, in today's so-called governmental and so-called social or cultural context, it's a heterogeneity that these American people have resorted to. America has emerged as, as, as we have seen multi-dimensional, multicultural society. It is impregnated with so many influences and uh, so-called culturally, racially different so-called background. We have a conglomeration of so many racial people. But instead of being this, what we must learn from America is that America is growing, maturing, of course, some pitfalls are there in the government system. It is up to the, the president of the America to, to rule, to bring the maturity that is expected. All these features are naturally going to be reflected in the literature. So, the nations, across the world brings us very close to these issues. What is happening in America are reflected in some way, in some cases, also in here, India or in China or in other parts of the world. Whatever, we have to grow for the humanity's sake. We had to cut these boundaries that we see. 
otherwise it will pose a very great threat to the peace and harmony of the people on the earth so for the civilizations and for the generations to continue and to live in a peaceful and harmonious way the political policies needs to be rethought we had to rethink what are essential and long preserve for the human and the sick we definitely needs to go beyond all that we have to find them out so of course <clears throat> america and china hostile nations but definitely these things are there so with this okay we end here like this thank you see you next time another term